Okay, right. We're going to UV map a cube, which may seem a ridiculously simple thing to UV map, but it can get quite involving. So I've just created a cube, and the first consideration you should really make is to have a look at the axes. Because if you're thinking of exporting this object, you might want to give some consideration to what the front is. So usually Z, the Z direction here, will, the direction we're facing, will be the front of the object when you import it into whatever software you're going to render your object in. So just have that consideration in terms of when you come down to apply the texture to this object. So we've got this cube which has six sides and we're going to wrap some texture around it. So ideally if we were, if this is going to be the front, the z-axis, we don't want any obvious seams along these edges. So that will be my first consideration when I'm building up my uh, my UV map. So let's, let's get on with it and, and just select the entire object and then right click and at the bottom here there's a little button UV mapping and you'll notice in the bottom left hand corner there's a few little options that it says the left button generate UV mapping or texture middle button resegment the object and uh, right button force to segmenting mode well because this hasn't been segmented yet then only it'll only have one response whichever button you press so just press one of the buttons and it takes you into this little window that allows you to break the object up. Now your easiest option at this point is to right click, select segment by, select projection and you'll see that each side of the cube has been assigned a colour. And What this means is that these edges will be cut. So you could do the equivalent of this if you selected the entire object and went to edge mode and right click you could mark the edges for cutting and that would have exactly the same effect as doing that and even still we could go back one stage further so I was told uh, reliably on, on my YouTube channel one of the commenters there kindly pointed out to me that if you select the edges in the normal view and select them to hard when you go to uh, the object and select UV mapping those edges will now be marked for cutting. So there's three different ways in which you can prepare edges for cutting. And this is before you've even done any cutting. So essentially each face has got a cut around it. So if we go continue by projection normal, so that'll be the normal off each of these areas, then you get this effect. So we've got six cube faces and this is our this is our map screen so this is where we can generate a template and this um, pattern of letters colored letters uh, is handy because it tells you which way the face is going to be orientated so if you were putting a pattern on here you'd, you'd want to see the right let's I'll just use the arrow keys to adjust this view so we can look at our cube here okay I'm just positioning it so I'll deselect everything right this is the front face if I select this whoops select two faces I just select one I'm getting some other face selection going on here it's a bit weird let's do it this way right okay so I've selected that's where the front face is in the template which may not be very helpful uh, this layout you can see that each of the faces is approximately well exactly in this case you can see they're the same scale if you wanted every face to have the same thing on it from this map you could select all these individual faces switch to the body mode here right click and then scale let's see scale here to max uniform oh, it's not quite worked I think we've got a join here between these two right if I just use the mouse wheel to roll, roll back you can just pull the individual faces out of the way until you get to the ones that you want to deal with so this one and this one all right they are linked they didn't cut in spite of the fact I've marked for cutting, so that's a bit strange. But, you know, the UV mapping's a bit like this. It's a sort of process as you go along. So I selected that face and then select this inner line here. So press space, deselect, select one of the inner lines here and then just cut it. And then I should now have two individual objects which I right click and I can scale the, oh, I need to select body mode there, scale to max uniform. If you just scale the face you don't have that option. So we want all these to be centered in the middle of the area where the texture is going to be generated. So I select these faces that are on the outside. I can right click and go move. Ah, I need to select body mode again. And then go move to 
center so you get different options as you do in the main screen depending on what mode you're in so now I've got all six faces overlapping one another so if I was to apply a texture here then each would appear on each individual face you can see this has already got quite involved and we're only dealing with a cube okay so I can close this window now and you can see I have got this map here that is applied to this cube but the thing is I haven't really created a texture yet and this can be a bit a bit confusing when you're using wings because the UV map something else and it'll get that because this is just the default texture there you have to generate a texture specifically to a face which you do in the window that I've just closed but I've not done yet so I want to go back and break this up another way so I'll select my entire cube now I've already UV mapped this once so I'm going to go to UV mapping use the right hand button and I can force another go at breaking this up and you can see because these hard edges that I selected on the original cube that are all set for cutting but I'm going to select these edges at the front right click and unmark those edges so now I'm going to unfold this box so that's the front and I'm going to unfold that back edge there as well so each face is connected but they're all should be able to fold out flat so I'll just mark that for not cutting so I'm just cutting around this side and around that side and there should be one cut on the bottom there so I now go right click and continue and unfold it and you get this arrangement which can be folded back up to form a cube but it's off at a funny angle now you can go right click and rotate and sort of rotate it round but handier than that if you go to the edge mode here um, I think we can do this in rotate now you can rotate something to chart X so what you need to do is select a edge or you can do it in vertex mode and select a couple of vertexes because that's essentially defining a line so that's the same thing with this I'm getting that line there and then go rotate to chart X and then you can see it's nicely orientated it for us or we can rotate it again to chart Y and have it this way around which you know, might be the more traditional approach so at this point I can now scale that again so select the entire body and scale and then use max uniform so I get the maximum height now this isn't as efficient a use of the total UV space as the previous example you can see that the area occupied by the 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 geometry that we're drawing on here is quite small compared with all this empty space now if you had other things attached to this cube you might be able to even map them and fit them in these spaces but you could always at this point change your mind so you could do this like say select this edge here right click and cut that so that now becomes a separate shape and then we can if we if we scale all these together we might end up with a bit of an issue uh, because this might end up getting really big so you'll have an out of proportion thing so if we do this now we'll just do it scale and go max uniform right we end up with this side at the back occupying the entirety of that UV space and then we've got this sort of cross section so to sort that problem out if you select the entire lot and go scale and normalize sizes then that should bring things back into proportion and then I can scale and and uniform so bring that in together so fit that inside there and then I want I need to pull the other square out that's hidden underneath that's ended up in the middle so I could put that down in one corner like so all right and then oops I need to deselect so press space and select the entire object you have to be careful when selecting because if you if you if you just press space to deselect it goes into this could be selecting an edge uh, a vertex or a face mode and you select a face and think you're going to drag this over and then you end up destroying your map and you can see it's got a bit distorted there so let's just bring that back into there so this is another way of organizing your UV space and now uh, we've got less wasted area but we have got this front face remember we're saying the Z's a front face and you can see now all oh, the lettering's upside down right not a problem we could we could rotate this so you can rotate it round and get the lettering right way up if you wanted the lettering back to front you've got the option to flip horizontally or vertically so you can see this is just because the shape's symmetrical you can't really detect that it's flipped but you can see it on the lettering there right now supposing supposing uh, I'm just going to 
pull that out like that. Right, supposing something had gone wrong with this face. Can I, and, and I've not noticed in this mode, so I'm in this position here, and uh, this face, uh, uh, maybe I forgot to UV map it all together, so I'm going to assign it the default material, and you can see now that it's not properly UV mapped at all. So what if I want to just UV map that face? In face mode, select the face, right click, and then right click again, UV mapping, and I can just have this face selected, and continue by, uh, we'll do uh, projection normal here, and then we've got that face. But you'll notice it's all on its own. If you want it to be associated with the other map, you need to get everything selected. So this is where things get a bit more complex. So we need to select the entire object and then go use a left click to go into UV mapping. And then we're in this position where we've got this face and it's it's too big. So again, we do the normalize sizes. So select the entire lot, scale and normalize the sizes. And then hopefully we can stitch that back into place. So select that top edge where you need it right click and we'll stitch it on and there we go we get back to this position where we've got these things and we can start rearranging them in our UV space again so you can go backwards and forwards if you can get your head around the process and uh, you know you, you can fix things even when you think you've broken things ir irrevocably it's just a matter of getting your head around the fact that you can just keep nipping in and out and, and fixing things and sorting them out so Oh, right, I've gone on for over 10 minutes and I wanted to keep this fairly short. The, there's quite a lot more that we can look at in this respect. But I think the next video I'll do a Taurus because that has some other interesting challenges. Uh, with, with this, but the cube is an ideal thing because it's like six flat faces that are aligned with X, Y and Z. But when you have a Taurus and you've got a hole in the middle of the shape, it, things get a bit interesting with respect to changing the geometry and how you can wrap the pattern around it. So uh, I'll sort of link these videos together. We'll start with the cube and work our way up to more interesting shapes. So I suppose that's the end of the video. It's not really resolved anything yet, but um, I think we've made a bit of progress. Okay then, cheers now.